Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I'm back here uh, on a kind of surprise live stream. And uh, I just want to talk about SQY and Coney. Uh, and I actually want to talk about the PYPY as well, three of the most recent yield max funds. And um, I want to give an opportunity for anyone that wants to come on to come on. We're probably going to have Andre on. And we're just going to look at how fast we think these are going to actually decline in value. So, as we know, um, the um, SQY just went public this week, and we're going to go over that. We're going to actually look at the underlying for each one, but bear with me just a second here. I'm sending the link out to the live stream. Let's see. Okay, so I got a couple of comments here waiting. Uh, let's see. Uh, Patrick was on. The word collapse causes concern no matter which yield next fund it is. Well, uh, that's right. I put that in the title, didn't I? Um, I probably need to change that. Oh, well, it gets your attention, doesn't it? Let's talk about the stock price of the Rex ETF. Uh, we probably might save that for another video, but I might save that for bonus content at the end of this one, too. So here, just in case any of you all are interested, I would not mind having any member of the audience join in to uh, talk about it. So I'll take that word out of the title when I'm done. But what we're seeing, what we're seeing uh, is with all the yield max funds, we're seeing them steadily decline over time. And it's a similar behavior like with all the covered call ETFs and whatnot. So let me just go to Yahoo Finance here and we'll just look over the uh, performance of all three of these and um, we'll kind of extrapolate based on how tsly and some of the other ones have done and kind of make a guesstimate as to how many months you know how many months we might expect decent dividends and then where we think we'll be possibly by the end of the year let's see here so um here we go with slow internet Door Gunner says, I have a bunch of the yield mix funds already. I'm going to wait a bit to get into the others. Yeah, uh, I like I said, I still only have TSLY. I was looking at Kony because I knew the dividend would be high for Kony. But um, this, who knows, this, this might be our best dividend that we've gotten this month. And it could just be downhill from here. Oh, Seamus has got out of all your yield mix funds. Really? Tell us, in the, tell us why. Uh, I mean... I can understand a little bit just based on what TSLY has done, but you'll have to uh, you'll have to tell us. So I'm not going to go too long. I might go for ten or fifteen minutes. The shorter, the better. That's typically how things work. Um, in, in terms of videos, um, but let's all right. Let's go to Yahoo Finance here, and we'll look at all of these. I'm still holding. I did dollar cost average down in the TSLY. So we will see. Hopefully that pans out. Hopefully it pans out, you know, for all of us that are invested. So first thing I'm going to do here is uh, look at SQY. And I'll also give the same theory that I gave in the last video I did. So we've already dropped as of Friday um, 88 cents a share in this fund. That's pretty fast, honestly, because we've only been public now for or let's see, we've only been public since, um, was it Monday? Hold on a second. Um, I want to say it's only been like a week. You look at, I don't understand why Fios is supposed to be one of the best internet services out there, but it's just, this is not moving very fast. Let's see why. Let's see. Okay, we were at 2019, actually, on the 11th. And then we dropped to 1896. Okay, so we've already... Let's see. Friday was the 13th. Friday the 13th. How about that? Um, okay, so we've already lost like a dollar in this fund. But let's look at SQ. So the underlying is square... Or block so it's 4317 as of Friday we dropped 5% in block 
And since this is a stock, we can look at earnings and whatnot. Um, the EPS is negative. Um, we've got an NA for price to earnings ratio. One year target estimate 76.37. So that would be um, almost doubling if it did that. And um, let's see here. So earnings, so quarter two, so they beat the last three out of the last four quarters, they beat earnings, but the projections are really high for earnings that are coming out November 2nd that are estimated to come out then. So the thing with Square, so Square I consider to be somewhat of a tech company, um, you know, the payment processing systems. So with a lot of the others, like obviously NVIDIA, Tesla, Meta, a lot of the former FANG stocks, we've seen Amazon, you know, Apple, we, we've seen recovery since the bottom. This one is pretty close to the 52-week low. And the same is also true for PayPal. So typically, these take a big drop once they've um, been out there for a few months. But we're going to see, you know, what's going to happen if, say, Square can get back to like 250 a share. But like Andre and I were talking about offline earlier, that may be unlikely to happen. So, okay, we're getting some comments here. Let's see. Yeah, so Jay is involved with the Defiance funds. Um, been trying to get him back on, actually. And um, he hasn't responded yet, but I'll follow up again. Let's see. The market stinks right now, so taking losses, using the drip to get more. That's really the strategy that I like. I think that's the most one of the one of the more feasible ones, because uh, dollar cost averaging down, you know, the lower the price gets, you can hopefully accelerate your payback time and at least get your money back and make some profit in the long run. So that's the goal with that. So you also said I think when the market starts coming back, we will be in good shape. The price will climb back up. I'm hoping so. I thought about if it were to get back to 18 selling at a gain. And then maybe trying to time it, looking at the gaps and the you know technicals and whatnot. Got a diversified portfolio of my favorites instead: Tesla, AMD, Nvidia, TSM, CNDS, SNPS, LRCS, AMAT, Clack, Equix, MSTR, Bitcoin. Wow, look at you! Well, that sounds good. Well, hopefully we're going to have that uh, you know the Bitcoin run up again when we get the Bitcoin halving. So we will certainly see in that regard. I have several yield max funds green on a few. Which ones do you have? New yield max yesterday. Which one was the newest? Um, okay. Now let's go back to Yahoo here. We're going to look at, next one we're going to look at is the PYPY for PayPal. I actually didn't do a video on that, but I probably should. So, all right. Now, what I'm hoping, you know, wishful thinking, but so Square, like I said, a minute ago, um, if this thing will cooperate. Oh, there we go. So Square has like the mountaintop in the middle of the five-year chart here. So we peaked at 268.07. And if, if we could get back to that, you know, we could certainly have a nice run-up and hopefully see these funds gain some value as well. Um, now let's look at the PYPY fund for PayPal. This is one I never did a video on. So we were at 1917 as of Friday. And let's see. So since September 25th, we've lost um, like 77 cents in it, quote, almost 80 cents. So we're seeing these funds drop, you know, already. And these are new. So, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, since September 26th, actually my phone's showing 2002. So that's an even steeper drop. So 85 cents or 4.23% to be exact. And it'll be some time before we see a dividend in this one because it went public kind of at an odd time. It seems like there's a 45 day gap in between when we get, when we get um, the dividends on these funds. So now let's go to the underlying. PayPal is one of my favorites. PayPal was my first actual options trade that expired worthless. I took a trade in 2021 and um, had a chance to get out of it, but I got greedy. 
and I could have had a nice gain, but then thought it would keep running because the way the market was and well, ended up waiting a couple of days and it expired worthless. So PayPal holds a special place in the coach's heart, shall we say, but otherwise seems to be a good company. Now the one year target estimate on the stock is 83.49. Earnings per share is positive, unlike Square uh, or Block. I still call it the old name. Price to earnings 15.62, 3.57 earnings per share. And then we've got, as far as earnings, so they beat three of the last four. They met earnings quarter two. Quarter three comes out November 1st, but that's going to be a high hurdle for them to exceed. They would have to match what they did in quarter four of 2022 at the very least to get there. So let's see the bottom, I believe. So this chart's very similar to Square. We peaked in August 288, and then we fell from there. So that would have been a great time to short this or do some put trades, do some bearish trades for sure. Because between August and June, between August 2021 and June of 2022, we saw like a roller coaster drop down all the way to 69.84. And right now we're actually at a 52 week low. We're like right there. So might be a good time to buy. I mean, I know I said collapse, but I'll, I'll change that wording in the title just for my loyal fans. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could be looking at if things recover, you know, if we look on the bright side, we could be looking at possibly a run up with these two. Um, so the other one, oh, Coney. So let's look at that one. Now, this one had a huge dividend, but it's been dropping as well. So let's see. Um, okay, so since August 14th, we peaked at 2119 on September 11th. We're at 1842, so we're flat in this one. We're pretty much flat in this one, trading at 1837 right now. And again, ignore the after hours with these because these typically don't do too well. So anyway, so that's Coney. Now let's look at Coinbase, which I remember when this one went public and shot up like crazy. Coinbase has a negative earnings per share, negative 5.62, um, a beta of 2.69, smaller market cap than the others. Earnings date's also November 2nd, so that's going to be a big day for earnings, actually. Um, it's beat earnings two out of the four quarters. It missed it abysmally at the end of 2022, hence some of the big drops. And then there we are, quarter one, so... It's strange to me, you know, how earnings work. Some of these are reporting quarter three. Some of these seem like they're reporting quarter two. So go figure on that one. Anyway, let's circle back and check some of the comments here. And then this is going to be the last one that I cover uh, this evening. And, uh, oh, oops, wrong screen. Okay, let me go back to comments here real quick. Okay. Oh, that's right. You're asking for the other one, the FEPI. I might just save that one for a separate video, so stay tuned. I promise that'll be coming soon. Who is this? Oh, somebody new. Scott40G. Nice name. Is that like your uh, average annual returns there? I have a 1,000 shares of Tesla, but I'm looking to buy another fund with a 1,000 shares. Okay. Yeah, so Rich Bose will do this one on the next video. I promise that'll come soon. Let's see. I like what you said earlier when you said buy and sell the fund when it's high low and still collect the dividends. Well, I actually know someone that's in the audience that did that, and it was a genius move, but you got to follow it pretty close. You can't be pulled in many, many different directions and be focused on your trading at the same time. Let's see. Ike Spear, also a new name. I hope you all are subscribed, of course. I have a bit of N NVDY. Oh, look at this one. You bought like, like all of them. Let's, let's see. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten of them. Wow, look at you. Who do we have here? Elaine 
Legault, markets are generally down. Yield max are single stock ETFs. I have a good part of my money in them. I won't sell, but I won't add. I'm kind of in that same boat too. I gotta say, um, I will dollar cost average if I think it's at a low and it's gonna go up some more. What's the support level on TSLY? Uh, we'll defer that, probably do another video. I'm not gonna get into that right now. New yield max yesterday. Oh, PayPal. Oh, good. Well, there we go. That's why I'm covering it now. See? Sometimes I seem behind the curve, but in reality, I may be ahead of the curve. Yeah, okay. So let's see. Oh, you did mention them. All right, so we're caught up again. Let's see here. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you appreciate this. Um, I'm trying to raise my game, of course. The audience is getting more and more demanding as I've been growing as a channel. Um, so that comes with the territory, of course. So, okay, yeah, we're on Coinbase. All right. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, and as far as TSLY, I don't want to get into technicals right now, but I think that the bottom something somewhere around like 13 or so. And I think it peaked at like 18 something. And honestly, if it gets back to 18, I would strongly consider selling and then hoping to follow the technicals and get it, you know, when it drops back again, because I do feel like it's going to fluctuate a lot. So here's Coinbase down $1.76 as of Friday. And um, this is very concerning here, unless this is a typo in Yahoo's part. The one-year target estimate, get this one, 40 cents. Unless this is a typo on Yahoo's part. I mean, is Yahoo saying this is going to pretty much like have a 99% decline? I mean, that's kind of concerning. So again, if we go back to 2021, the good old days, um, back when stock market was producing insane returns, back when CPM was even better for finance YouTubers, ironically, right before I got monetized, um, we were at 319.42, almost 320. If it was $100 higher, I could make a joke, but so like 320 instead of 420. But anyway, we peaked at like 320. I seem to remember it being higher than that, but I guess it was 320. And then it was a roller coaster ride down from there. Everything seemed like it bottomed like by June of last year. And so we have come up from there. But with this one, this could be very risky, especially if Yahoo Finance is saying 40 cents. That's got to be a typo or something. But anyway, so we'll see. We'll definitely see uh, how things go. Those are our th three newest ones. Um, I would hope, I know I said at what point, you know, would these funds like just plummet in value? I don't want to necessarily use the term collapse, but, you know, because obviously we hope that doesn't happen. Um, but at what point would these plummet in value? Or if two out of three of these recover, at what point could we see, you know, some nice returns? So we'll definitely see. It's definitely an open discussion. Um, let me close out with some comments here and then I'm going to end it. Uh, I like seeing new people on here. Oh, but here's a longtime follower. You might should come out with a Zim ETF. That would be cool. I agree on that one. Welcome back, by the way. I'm just surprised at what FVPI opened at. We'll cover that very soon. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't remember your name unless you've changed your name. I know we have one or two people that change their name every five minutes. But so you'll have to remind me when you sent the email or maybe what email you sent under. Um, Keeping my yield max and I'll invest my dividends in QQQY. Interesting. Okay, you all. Um, let's see. You know what? Why not make it an even 20 minutes? So, you know what? Like I said, I didn't forget bonus content. So, I'll go ahead and look at FEPI at the end of this one. And I'll probably still do a separate video on it. But since I, I'm a little OCD about like uneven numbers, so I was at 19 minutes. I'm just going to go to 20. Um, so we'll go back to Yahoo. We'll look into FEPI real quick. And I'll give you my expert, expert uh, lack of opinion on it. How's that for a, for a uh, worse comment there? Um, so you said you were surprised at what it opened at. So, all right, let's do a screen share again here. And, uh, oh, awesome. Thank you. Now I got to check that count, make sure it went up. I was growing. I'm, I know I'm not supposed to talk about this, but um, at least my handlers tell me not to talk about this. You know, I'm just kidding. 
I make up my own rules, but I've been encouraged to not talk about my sub count and stuff like that. But it's just upsetting a little bit. I was growing at such a high rate. And in the month of October, it's pretty much stalled. I do see that it jumped, by the way. So thank you. Thank you for that. Always welcoming new blood, new people in. How'd you find me, by the way? You'll have to tell me. Uh, I'm glad to know the algorithm's at least still pushing us out a little bit. Tara Slayer, the only one with NAV erosion is TSLY. The others don't really have it yet. NVDY is up by a lot. Yeah, that one's actually, I think that's our second highest in terms of dividends. Would it be good to short FVPI? Well, I can't give advice like that, but I can look at some ideas on what I might do were I in such a situation. So let me share Yahoo Finance again real quick. I guess we're going to go to midnight on the East Coast here. Uh, oh, well, time flies when we're having fun. So let's see here. Um, okay. So here's the Rex Fang Innovation Equity Premium ETF. And I just saw by accident the other day that this was going public, and thus it has. So we're at 5108. We're down 75 cents already. Uh, um, and I think this just went public this last week. It might have been only trading for like a day or so. Let me look at my phone here because Yahoo's not always accurate. And uh, let's see. Uh, F -E -P oh, I got to add this to the, my list of thousands of tickers that I already follow. So October 11th, we're at 5169, 5183, October 12th. And then 5108. So we've already lost close to 80 cents. Um, so with this one, you know, it seems like a high price, honestly. So it's a thing fund. If we get Jay back on, I've definitely got to ask him about these. I mean, it, it might not be a bad idea to short, but I mean, who knows? I mean, I would only suggest that for educational conceptual purposes anyway. But I mean, yeah, it does seem like it opened a little bit too high. Might not be a bad idea. So, all right. Uh, I like this comment. You are right. I probably gained between like 150 and 200 from that. So that did, that made a lot of my August numbers for sure. Um, oh, so you found me by searching Coney. Well, perfect. I'm glad that uh, it popped up for you there. So, all right. We looked into that briefly, gave my, my very, very expert opinion on it. So, well, all right, you all, thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We got a bonus three minutes out of me, so that's good. So um, hopefully we'll be back soon. Uh, there's some exciting things in the works as far as future ventures for not only this channel, but um, well, I guess I can say this to all of you all, um, only the loyal ones of you that stayed all the way to the end. Um, I'm actually, there's, there's some, like I said, exciting things in the works, working on doing a three-way, it was going to be a four-way channel, um, with guests that have been on before con pretty consistently. Um, well, I can just go ahead and say it probably. So Andre, Engineer Blake, and me. And we were trying to get the other guy from Passive Income Ideas, but he hasn't, I haven't heard much from him recently. So, but we're looking to, you know, do some exciting things, you know, with a podcast and whatnot. So stay tuned. Some exciting things in the works. Um, well, thank you all. Uh, I love the newbies. You know, you all start out so nice. And then what happens when you get to be consistent fans, a lot of you start to get really demanding as far as what you want. Except for this guy. He's been subscribed to me for a while and he's been pretty cool. He hasn't been too. I don't know if you're in the Discord or not. But um, yeah. Anyway, well, thank you all. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned and take care. And we'll see you soon.